another beautiful day and a brand new episode of Tax Matters. Of course, this episode is a follow-up to the last episode. And that's talking about the Federal Inland Revenue Service Division 2020-20. Yes, you heard me right. The FRS has decided to key into the federal government's Vision 2020-20. And if you watched the last episode, you will recall that we had two big fishes in the house. Mr. Nathan Jamel is the head of planning, reporting, and statistics at the Federal Land Revenue Service headquarters in Abuja. And Mrs. Chaka Okoye is the director, program management office, non-tax, at the FRS headquarters also in Abuja. Uh, Madam, uh, Mr. Jamia was talking about the medium term plan. And uh, that's for four years, 2012 to 2015. In the year 2012, the first year of that plan, what would you say the FRS achieved? We achieved so much, but I, w- I will just focus on the main highlights of um, our achievement in 2012. Um, you are aware that in 2012, the national tax policy was signed into law. That was a major breakthrough, and it was the first of its kind. Again, in 2012, um, looking at the focus on um, an effective um, uh, collection or reliance on non-oil taxation, FRS was able to beat its target uh, with about 1.5%, and it's just growing. We collected about 1.79 trillion in um, um, non-oil taxes. We also, in 2012, had started the uh, focusing on um, indirect taxation, which is part of um, what we aim to achieve. And there's been so many campaigns launched on VAT collection. I do not have the exact numbers now, but I do know that our VAT collection also improved and there is um, focus on indirect taxation. As a matter of fact, we also launched many projects which is um, aimed at collecting VAT at sources from the source. We also embarked on um, a lot of um, education of taxpayers, encouraging self-assessment, and our numbers or ratio for self-assessment also increased. We, we commenced, that was in 2011, um, the Integrated Tax Administration System, which is automation of all our tax uh, processes in other tax um, operations. Um, some of our major achievements also was the launching of the um, single tax identification number for every taxpayer in the country through the JTB. That was launched by Mr. President, and that's um, aimed at eradicating this issue of multiple taxation. Mm. Do you have anything to add to that, talking about the achievements of the FRS in the year 2012? Yeah, in fact, the revenue target we achieved in 2012 was not just um, above the government target. But also, it was an improvement over 2011 collection by about 8%, 8.19%. And also, the ratio of oil to non oil also improved compared to 2011. In 2011, oil was 67% of collection to 33 of non oil. 2012, it was 64 oil and 36 non oil. So, it was an improvement in that area. Also, in this, if you compare year to year also, non-oil grew by 18%, while oil grew by 3% from 2011 to 2012. So that means our emphasis on non-oil is actually yielding results. Building on your achievements in 2012, what aspects of that medium term plan have you uh, set out to achieve in the year 2013? Our plan for 2013, as usual, our number one uh, plan is always to achieve the revenue target and even to surpass it. Okay. Uh, having made 5 trillion in 2012, we're hoping that 
we will make something like 5.6, 5.7, or at least more than 5 trillion. That is our hope for this year. That's what the revenue target. At the same time, we also want to conclude so many of our projects, um, particularly the ITAS project, which is going to automate virtually all of our processes and therefore enhance our productivity and service delivery. So we believe it will have an impact and we believe that we are going to achieve a lot of it in this year. In the area of uh, the taxpayer, a lot has been done for the taxpayer to make life very easy for the taxpayer. As I said earlier, the same assessment regulations have already been brought out so that it will be easy for a taxpayer to sit down and calculate his taxes and actually pay. And having operated our pay direct system, you simply go and pay your tax in the bank and that's all. And as, as soon as you pay, we see it and we know you've paid. So just simplify the process. And uh, our staff, a lot has been also done to improve the quality of our staff. We have a lot of training, both in and outside of the country. We have implant training. So there are all sorts of training that we are also planning in 2013 to bring our staff to world-class status in terms of service delivery. We are also in the area of collaboration with other tax authorities. We are collaborating with them and want to collaborate more in 2013. We are members of CATA, that's come off as a of uh, tax administrators. We have ATAF, the African Forum. We are now in the forefront developing the one for West Africa, OATAF. So just to help us to collaborate with our fellow tax officers in other countries, because there's synergy when you collaborate. We also uh, will continue to receive missions from the IMF, from the World Bank, from uh, West African Monetary Institute, so that collaboration helps us a lot to improve our understanding and our service delivery. So those are some of the things we want to achieve in 2013. 2013. Madam, let's talk about modernizing the system. You are in charge of modernization, project management, non-tax. We also know about ITAS, the Integrated Tax Administration System. How is the modernization plan going? Let me, let me even look at what we have done in 2012 and how we are taking that on to 2013. In terms of um, taxpayer service and service delivery and making um, and having an efficient tax system in Nigeria, the service went on to create the taxpayer service last year, which is dedicated to providing you know, three main areas, sensitizing the, cost, um, the taxpayer, creating awareness of all our processes, educating the taxpayer, and most importantly, supporting the taxpayer. In terms of supporting the taxpayer, we have created a um, business support system under the taxpayer service where we begin to engage the taxpayers, the small and medium um, taxpayers or enterprises, and um, assisting them or giving them support in how they can maintain their records, you know, the issue of maintaining records, which typically, you know, comes into play when, you know, in very rare instances that we have the need to audit. So we're beginning to engage one-on-one -on -one with the um, small and medium taxpayers to teach them and educate them how they can begin to maintain good records, you know, not just for themselves, but also for tax purposes. We're moving from enforcement to really voluntary compliance um, where we're letting people you know be good citizens and they know the importance of uh, paying their taxes so with that voluntary compliance we've also developed what we call the tax calendar where there is no tax person breeding them you know or coming to you to say your due date is this you already know you know um, uh, the due dates of uh, the different types of taxes that is expected for you to file your returns. We also have the tax diary. We also have a tax calculator where you can go on the internet and then enter all those, you know. You know really? Yes, yeah, it is. We've also published a um, lot of flyers and we continue to sensitize. 
like um, I stated earlier, the VAT campaigns that are going on is towards the indirect taxation. Now we're taking just that to the next step in 2013, not just on the sensitization for indirect taxation, we're also actually particularizing it through projects, such as taking VAT at source. And the way we have planned it is to go industry sector by sector, and even to the MDAs, you know, like um, Nathan did say earlier, because we realized that collecting tax through indirect taxation is much easier than, you know, the, the direct taxation. Those are some of the things we've done, in, started in 2012, and we're then taking it to the next step in 2013. Of course, um, the most important asset that we have continue to be our staff. We're also um, developing career path, of which every single staff has to belong to a career path. And within that career path, your progression is clear, you know, to the staff, what training, what capacity you need to move to the next and all that is also clearly um, developed and we're going to, we've started implementing that, that every, at a certain level, you must belong to a particular career path. We continue to develop our staff to the point that we, we want FRS staff to be highly skilled professionals that are mobile. In other words, they'll be relevant in any market and they can compete in any market. That's the stage we are taking it to and our training plan for our staff also defines all of this. <music> Let's look at the TIN scheme, the Taxpayer Identification Number Scheme. For some time now, the FRS has had that in place. And of course, like we always say, a few more states like uh, Lagos, Delta, also have TIN. But then, the Joint Task Board has now uh, begun a nationwide scheme, and the FRS is a major player in that regard. How are you linking the FRS team to the JTB team? If you <clears throat> go back again and recall under our tax policy, one of the elements or the core elements under the tax policy for our tax system 2020, which 2020, was the eradication of these issues surrounding multiple taxation. So the whole concept of TIN is, is derived from there. And it is to, for each taxpayer in Nigeria to have one tax identification number, irrespective of where you're domiciled, be it Lagos, Delta, Abuja, or there's just one number that identifies the taxpayer. So that's the whole concept. And FRS is a major player. And if you also know that the chairman of Joint Tax Board is the Chief Executive of uh, FRS. So we have a whole lot at stake in the success of that initiative. So we started with a pilot in 2011 with six states, JTB and FRS, making 18 entities, and that has gone live. Those um, entities are currently registering taxpayers after the launch by Mr. President last year. We've gone ahead to go into other states and as the states contribute to the scheme by paying what they're supposed to pay, you then connect the, or you bring the state, that particular state, onto the platform. So, so far, about 23 states have paid, um, have made their own contribution, and we've actually completed the implementation um, for about 20 states. And um, not only have you completed the implementation of the movement of these states to the platform, they are also actively using the platform. And today we have over 20,000 individuals registered on the platform and they will have over 300,000 corporates that are registered on the platform. What will happen to the FRS team when you cut over to the JTB team? What, what, what will happen? How are you going to integrate? When you say if, we've, we've actually cut over, we we'll say semi-automated, okay. through our taxpayer database. Now, the 300-something um, corporates that I say we have registered mm -hmm. in the TIN database of JTB is actually a migration from FRS. So we're migrating the corporates because it's easier to migrate the corporates onto the platform. Mm -hmm. So now they have JTB okay. TIN. And we have started also to inform these corporates of what their JTB number is. 
But what has happened is that both numbers, the FRS team and then the JTB team still exist on the database, on our own database. But on the JTB database, it's just the JTB team, okay. as I would call okay. it now, just to differentiate yes. Um, yes. directly to um, your concerns. So we're beginning to inform and send the um, team certificates to the corporate so that they know and then in future um, transactions, they can then use their... Um, JTB team as against their um, FRS team. Okay. However, if they still present their FRS team, we will recognize that it is that same JTB team and continue to inform them okay. until they get used to using the JTB okay. team. Okay. So we're having a sort of seamless migration, especially with the corporates. But with the individuals, because the individual's biometrics needs to be captured, they will either have to come to the FRS offices um, that has the um, machines or equipment to take the biometrics or the fingerprints and then they will also get registered. Okay. Tax refund is an integral part of an efficient and a friendly tax system. We know for a fact that the FRS itself uh, tried to put mechanism in place for an efficient tax refund system about three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. How easy is it now to claim tax refund and what is the procedure? Uh, it is quite easy now because one we have a department that is handling that specifically mm -hmm. two money has been set aside to pay refund so there is money and uh, three the procedure is very simple once you have an, an issue about a refund, come to the department, they'll give you all the necessary forms to fill, and then from there, it will be processed. As we said, the money is there to pay, only that people need to come and prove that, yes, there's a case for refund. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And if you may add to that, to show um, our seriousness and... Um, how we want in driving this trust with the taxpayer, just like you've, you've mentioned before, being friendly to the taxpayer, is we've also built um, a measurement um, tracking indices for ourselves that once that figure to refund is agreed with the taxpayer, I think it's about 90 days when that refund is made. Mm -hmm. and, and for us, that's building trust because that's where we're driving to, to build trust with the taxpayers for the authority. Once the sum has been agreed, yeah. once you agree that a refund is uh, necessary for that, right. yeah. within 90 days, you pay. Within 90 yeah. days, you get your refund. Okay, okay. We'll go for a short commercial break. When we come back, we'll be looking at the implementation of the national tax policy and other matters. Still talking about the FRS vision 2020-20. But then you may want to know what steps to take in applying for and getting a refund when you are qualified for tax refund. Delay is our guide. Chineke, man, they don't increase my salary money. No be mistake. Or go account and do so. Papa Junior, we never hear of Peter. Now the new MDB that. <laughs> Talk now. Peter. Now, Personal Income Tax Amendment Act. We, Mr. President, just signed for law to better the life of them people. So them to go get more money to enjoy with them family. You see this amended act? They don't reduce the tax we do on top of your salary money. They can't increase consolidated allowance money we will get every month. And you will say, now the president will really listen if you do better things for the people. Ah, Mr. President, you do well, oh. I'm blessing you, they think of me when you design this bitter. <laughs> now I feel do boku boku things this year. I feel rent shop for Mama Junior. Buy this book for Junior. Send money to village. May they think begin build my house. So, you say I'm going land, Of course. Oh, you this is our country for you. <laughs> Peter, oh, 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 Peter, hey, Peter. JTB created a tax-friendly environment. Tax refund. Refund may arise in any of the following instances. Over assessment of taxes by the FIRS, 
outright overpayment of taxes by the taxpayer, double payment for the same tax liability by the taxpayer, deduction of VAT at source without corresponding adjustment of input VAT, deduction of withholding tax at source higher than the tax profile of the company, input VAT claim by, z by zero rated VATable persons, input VAT in excess of output VAT, stamp duties paid in respect of incorporation of a company whose registration was discontinued, errors committed by collecting agents, that is banks, systems error, multiple remittances, wrong classification of taxes, errors of transposition, and unauthorized deduction. Who qualifies to claim? A taxpayer can claim refund on ease or her own behalf, and collecting agents like banks can also claim refund. Claims can be paid either in check or by crediting the claimants against future taxes. How to claim tax refund? The first step involves documentation. Tax refund application must originate from qualified taxpayer with the following information and documents directed to the relevant FIRS office. The documents and information required are precise reason for refund, type of tax, period of transaction, FRA receipt of payment, bank tellers, printout record of paid direct to web portal, stamp document in respect of stamp duties refund. Remember, only the taxpayer whose name appear on the application may claim refund. This is followed by verification. All application received will be subject to proper auditing by the FIRS to ascertain the genuineness of all claims. Where is the closest FIS office to you? This week on Know Your Tax Office, we are taking you to two offices in Lagos, the Alimosho and the Agege Micro and Small Taxpayers Office. Are you based in Agege, Agbado, Miron, Ajunwo, Akute, Ojedu, Fagba, Iju? Then the Agege Micro and Small Taxpayers Office is your office. It is located at number 79B, Iju Ishaga Road, Imola Bus Stop, by Imola Filling Station, Ifako, Agege, Lagos. We move on to Agege's neighbor, the Alimosha Micro and Small Tax Office. Yes, Alimosha MSTO is covering Ako Mojo, Shasha, Egbeda, Isheri, Egbe, Ikotun, Meron, Ilapo, Subiru Oje, Okonla, Ikola, Ikola. The Alimosha MSTO is located at number 19, Idimu Egbeda Road, Idimu, Lagos. Welcome back. We are still on to Tax Matters and we are still talking to Mr. Nathan Jamayal and Mrs. Chiaka Okoye, both of the Federal Inland Revenue Service. I will still stay with you. You are in charge of program implementation. We are looking at automating the system looking at modernizing the tax system. Maybe along that line, you also look at the ITAS, Integrated Tax Administration System. But what we want you to share with us are the key elements of the modernization plan. You know, how you plan to automate the system to make life easier for the taxpayer. The, the whole essence of automating the tax processes is not just to make tax operations a lot easier to the tax officials themselves, but also to make things a lot more transparent for the country and easier and friendly for the taxpayer. Now, we're looking at automating the whole tax operation system beginning from registration to returns and even accounting. So, the taxpayer can register online himself, providing all documentations and all that that is required. We're also interfacing that with a document management system that will capture all of the documents that the taxpayer is submitting. And then the taxpayer, and then that also ties back to the self-assessment where the taxpayer also files his returns online and can actually follow that with also paying online. So it, it makes 
the system a lot more transparent. It also makes it a lot more easier and friendlier for the taxpayer, as much as it's for the tax officials and for the government. Where do you see the tax system in five years? I see the tax system keying into the FSS Vision 2020 in making Nigeria an international financial services center where we would have created a friendly environment where our tax system will not be a discouragement for investors, where we would have achieved voluntary compliance by our taxpayers. That is the tax system that I see in five years. Where do you see the tax system in Nigeria in the next five years? From the perspective of the tax collector and that of the taxpayer. <laughs> One, I can see that tax revenue is going to play a major part in government revenue. Okay. I can also see that taxpayers are going to regard tax payment as a matter of national duty. As the system becomes friendlier, as the system becomes more open, as the system becomes responsive to the needs of taxpayers, tax pay payment is going to be something of joy to do. That's what I see the taxpayers are going to do in the future. End of discussion. Nothing more to add, except to thank Mr. Jamiel and Mr. Okoye on your behalf, and to thank you most sincerely for watching.